Imagine two fighters climbing into a boxing ring, and the announcer says, In this corner, we have the undefeated heavyweight champion of the world, weighing in at an impressive 285 pounds of pure muscle. Give it up for criticism! And the crowd roars its approval. Then the announcer says, And in the other corner, weighing in at 112 pounds? his voice dropping suddenly as he sounds confused, we have the challenger, Gratitude. Now, what if I told you that Gratitude wins this fight every time? Curious how this could be? Well, stay tuned. <laughs> You're listening to the Higher Attitudes Podcast. Inspiration to lift your soul. Often, criticism, that negative form of judgment, stems from a lack of perspective. When we fail to recognize the gifts that other people have been given, we miss a lot. Typically, we look at what others are missing. We wish they would change because we recognize what seems obvious to everyone but them, that their lives would be much enhanced if they were only to live them as we do. But if we allow ourselves to see the world only from our own perspective and allow criticism to run rampant in our lives, we become that overconfident 285-pound muscled fighter who is about to be knocked out. Perhaps when we notice how different another person's approach to life is. And here's a hint, this typically takes the form of annoyance with the other person's actions or their approach to life. And when we catch ourselves critically judging another person, and most, if not all of us, do this to one extent or another, what would happen if we looked deeper than we are typically used to looking? What if we let the 112-pound fighter called gratitude loose in our ring. Would gratitude knock criticism out of our lives? The gifts of others are easy to see when they shine brightly on a stage, or on a sports field, or a court, or on a movie screen, whether it's sized from massive all the way down to handheld. We celebrate these gifts in the news, in magazines, on talk shows. In part, we celebrate them because they are amazing, and because they leave us full of wonder. And in part, we celebrate them because those who share them understand that there's money to be made. But many of the gifts that the children of God possess are not as marketable. And if these other gifts are left without a spotlight shining on them, is there no value to be found? Many of God's best gifts to his children are of this second type. They are not obvious, especially at first. In scripture, many of the heroes therein are more flawed than amazing at first. Moses was unsure and in need of a spokesman. David was the forgotten shepherd boy. And only later, much later, was he raised to kingship. Jesus himself was born and lived in humble circumstances. Many people continue to ignore the gift of the Son given by God to mankind. There are many hidden gifts, and these often unseen gifts are how gratitude can knock out criticism. These gifts are all around us if we pause and look for them. Many are given to people who seem to be of little or no consequence. Some of these people might even annoy us. I wonder if we were to consciously look for the hidden gifts given to others, would we not gain the ability to see God's work with new eyes? I think we would also learn to see our own hidden gifts. And if you're worried, by the way, about pride being an issue, if you begin to see your own gifts, I believe there is little chance that more recognition of our own and others' gifts will spoil us. The news crews will not be waiting outside in our front yards. But we will be more likely to act and use our gifts if we recognize them. And we will be more likely to encourage others to use their own gifts if we recognize them and can remind them of what they possess. Now, I'm not usually one for making resolutions in January. I prefer to make them as I need them. However, this year, my need for a resolution and January seem to line up very nicely. So, 
I resolve to look deeper to discover the gifts of others. I choose to take note when I feel impatient or annoyed or put out and to ponder what gifts might have been given to those who I'm impatient or annoyed with. I resolve to ponder what purpose God had in giving that person their strengths and weaknesses and to ponder how God would have me think differently. I commit to pause and wait if understanding doesn't come immediately. And finally, I commit to keep trying when I don't feel anything is changing. The Spirit of God whispers that if we do this, the reward for us will be increased and renewed gratitude for the blessings that God gives us so freely. As we notice previously unnoticed gifts or those that are typically ignored, we will see how generous God truly is. The effect of an increased awareness of God's unbounded generosity is hope, and hope itself is a gift. And if we recognize this gift of hope within ourselves, we can share that with anyone who will listen. Watch out, criticism. <laughs> You're no match for the generous gift of hope that gratitude brings into the ring. Thank you for listening. We'd love to have you join us on Facebook at facebook.com slash higher attitudes. Do you have an uplifting thought to share? Why not join our Facebook discussion group? Visit the group at facebook.com slash groups slash higher attitudes to request membership. If you'd like to leave a question about a challenge you're facing, or if you'd like to share a thought about how you've overcome negativity, call 719-301-301. 0303 and record your question or comment. Please note that carrier rates may apply. Again, call 719-301-0303 to leave a question or comment. We hope you've enjoyed the show and we look forward to you joining us for the next episode of the Higher Attitudes Podcast. Please remember that the advice offered in this show is intended for informational purposes only. Please read our full disclaimer in the show notes.